Right, welcome everybody to another episode of Latif's Inspired. I'm in London today and I'm all get east and I'm going to be going into Brick Lane today. A nice little, um, uh, an episode for you guys. I'm going to be finding out what's going on in Brick Lane and I'm also going to be visiting one of my old friends. I've also done a um, review on this place, the Grand Bangla, serving Bangladeshi food. And as you know, on my channel, I cook uh, British Asian food, which, which covers Bangladeshi food, Pakistani food, Indian food, and various different other cuisines, etc. So today, firstly, I need a cup of tea. So I'm gonna see, um, Asia is known for tea, so the Karak chai, masala chai, etc. So let's go, show you a bit of Brick Lane, what's happening, because the curry industry at the moment is not great in Brick Lane. There used to be about 50 restaurants at one point. However, there aren't many now. I don't even know how many uh, BIR uh, restaurants there are in Brick Lane. So this one that I'm specifically going to, it's a Bangladeshi restaurant, and I'm actually going to be cooking a few dishes for some of my friends. They've let me go into the kitchen, and I'm going to see if I can influence them to do some fantastic, traditional, authentic Asian dishes. It doesn't need to be all Bengali, because we are British Asian food, and we've got loads of different influences in our food and our culture. So let's go to Brick Lane, meet my friend, and then we're going to be talking about the food, the culture, the curry houses in Brick Lane. Come with me. Right, so people, I'm just heading into uh, Brick Lane, but they're at the top of uh, the Whitechapel High Street, E1, Borough of Stepney. Now this is um, Osborne Street, London's E1, and I'm gonna be heading, so just before Brick Lane, this is the Osborne Street, and we're gonna be walking, I mean, our, this is the uh, Fish and Chip Stroke pub shop, and there's the quite famous FA's Turkish restaurant. Well, I don't know if it's famous, however, it is busy every time I drive past London. So have you shown that? So nice little Turkish, let, 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 let's, show, let's show them this. I'm not actually gonna go in, however, you can see uh, what they do. Now those kebabs look quite mighty appetizing. You've got the lamb shawarma, chicken shawarma, loads of different salads, etc. I'll ask the guy if I, can sh if I can just do a little clip inside. So if you're coming to Brick Lane, you can see what they're about. So let's check out FAs and see if they let me film. The, owner, the owners are quite friendly, they've let me come in. Now, as you can see, we've got the rotisserie with the uh, kebabs, the shawarmas, and they've got all this nice little salads. Check this out. So lovely little Turkish places are known for their salads and mezes and stuff, so this is amazing. So if you're coming into London's East London, right at the heart, uh, before Brick Lane, there's this lovely uh, Turkish place, Efe's. Uh, I haven't personally come here. However, I would like to visit, maybe see the food. And, oh, they do fresh fish as well. Check this out. Those lovely kebabs. Kebabs. They look like those Adana kebabs, chicken, lamb, and the Turks are very known for their kebabs. So these look absolutely amazing. So let's show you the rest of Brick Lane. Right, um, well, I've just come into here and one of my viewers actually watches me. I haven't ma been making many uh, videos at the moment and this is quite a little uh, nice video for me personally because it's got Brick Lane. And obviously I'm in the British Indian style of cooking uh, industry and I've just met somebody who's watches my channel, right? So yeah. do you cook or? Uh, no, I don't, I don't cook that much. No, or well, you're just watching me cook. <laughs> so he likes the channel, he watches the food for us. Nice to nice meet to you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for the support. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Right, that was quite nice. The uh, people at FA's Turkish restaurant were quite nice. So as soon as I went in, the guy even, uh, one of the guys who were dining there, he actually watches this channel. So they were really nice. It was nice and hospitable. However, let's go and have that lovely tea. Right, I'm outside, smoke and grill. I'm just walking past, I fancy a cup of tea, and it's a special offer, one pound 50 carrot chai. So let's see how authentic that tea is. And for £1.50, that's a bargain. Let's check it out. Jazakallah thank you. Right, people, nice little place. Um, they do fast food over here. And this is my tea. There you go. So I need this, and this is meant to be... Are you guys Bengali? No, she's not Bengali. No, are you Bengali? The owner is Bengali. 
Yeah. The owners, yeah? Yeah. So it's my fellow Bengali owners over here. So I hope, hopefully this is going to be nice with that Bengali masala chai flavor, yeah? Thank you, Baya. Right, people, as you know, Brick Lane's going a bit retro style. So there's graffitis and the stuff, everything. Uh, and I think the council is embracing it. Now, this tea, let's check out. It looks nice and thick. Let's give this a go. Bismillah. Oh, I can smell the cardamom. I can smell the cardamom, I can smell the bay leaf. Um, it's not as flavorful how I would have wanted it, but it's okay. Something, uh, it's high in calorie tea. It's got a nice thick, milky uh, flavor to it. So yeah, let's check out Brick Lane. So I'm at the entrance of Brick Lane. You've got a nice little gate, which says in Bengali, Bangla town. And the sign on the road, if you just show this, it says Brick Lane in Bengali. It's not even in English. But right at the top of the street, the S Career and Sons, it says Brick Lane E1. So now I'm going to meet up with my good friend who's also one of the business owners at Grand Bangla where I'm cooking today. Right people, so I'm here with one of the owners of a restaurant in Brick Lane and he's also my childhood friend. Shalim, how are you bro? You okay? I'm fine, thank you. Assalamu alaikum bro. How are you? Wa alaikum rahmatullah. So he's got a business and I've also reviewed it, the Gram Bangla. It's very traditional, authentic Bangladeshi food. The food that you would get at your homes, right? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. So foods that you get at your homes, Bangladeshi households, you, he sells it in the restaurant. However, today he's asked me to cook for him. So I have come all the way to his restaurant. Well, I'm going to go and visit the restaurant and he's let me in the kitchen. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to go to the Zaman Brothers, the Taj stores and get a few products i really want to do gorur mangsha beef right because you know how poppy that is in bangladeshi cooking right absolutely absolutely you like beef as well? i love beef yep. and i uh, to be honest with you can't wait yep this is going to be a twist because i'm going to be using the cow meat as well as the cow trotter it's like a proper nihari dish and i'm going to be doing it with some shakora so it's got that zingy uh, zesty sort of flavor and big chunks of meat bro you like meat yeah inshallah meat yeah. is is always nice yeah. and being bangladeshi we like fish alhamdulillah but we can't get um, fresh fish in uh, UK, the Bangladeshi fishes. So I'm going to be cooking my, one of my favorites is the sea bass. I'm going to be doing a few techniques and um, I don't think Shelim's had it the way I'm going to cook it. So I'm hoping he's going to enjoy it. Also, I'm going to be doing a proper chicken dish as well. So you, chicken is the most popular dish, uh, popular meat in the UK, right? So we're going to be doing a fantastic Karahi style chicken jiao fry, but with a Bengali twist. So I'm looking forward to cooking and you looking forward to eating, bro? To be honest with you, I've known you all my life since we were babies. You've been cooking for many years. Yeah. And today is going to be an opportunity to try your food out. And I'm well excited. So today he's ready to die because I'm going to poison him. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. For my brother, anything. <laughs> so it's going to be quite nice. There's going to be a few of our friends as well over and a few people from Brick Lane, right? Yeah. So a few influ influential people in Brick Lane, yeah. right? So uh, the plan is um, Abdul Latif is cooking in Grand Bangla. A few of our childhood friends are coming because none of us tried his cooking, which we want to try. Um, my partners, older brothers, Stroke, are going to be there. A uh, few of the uh, Bangladeshi uh, community people will be there. Um, we're just going to socialize and enjoy Abdullah's cooking. That's, 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 that's about it, really. So believe it or not, I am quite stressed out. Firstly, I need to get my ingredients. I'm running out of time. So make sure to watch the whole vlog. And if you enjoy what I do, remember to hit the like button. And if you like my recipes, press subscribe and put the notification on because you're going to have some fantastic recipes recipes and show some love and press that like button it helps me on the algorithm and this is a little bit different because Brick Lane is close to my heart we kind of grew up here we used to come here yes. when we were younger have like uh, we, we started eating like chicken and chips and things like that we, we started off with uh, sweet and spice yeah, it, right. that was that shop right it was just that shop there which is now Babel which what, is what, now what? turned Babel that's 
now closed well, down. Wait, is that Turkish or something? No, that was uh, actually a uh, similar type to Sweet and Spice. We yep. used to actually come here as babies. Yep. And the first thing we used to do is go in there and have the kebab roll. The sheik kebabs with that red yes, sauce, yeah? with the red sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was affordable <laughs> yeah. but tasty at the same time yeah. it had the puri and uh, the kebab and the red sauce with the onions and stuff so you, you know if you, if you come to think of it now right the quality it was it used to be quite dry as well yeah however that you know that sauce that red sauce used to make it so nice yeah to be honest with you the restaurant was yeah. really old and tatty yeah, yeah. but you know, know the love food it. was Unreal, even yeah. though as a young age, I remember I used to be holding my dad's hand. My dad used to take yeah, me yeah, in there. Yeah. So, everyone used to do their shopping, right? Cash and yeah, carry, so, and then go and eat. So, l let me give you a bit of history. We are from South London, me, Abdul Latif. We were born in South London, and South the other, West London. South West London, sorry for correcting me. Yeah, so, yeah. We, we there was no halal grocery shops there. So, when we were babies, we used to hold our dad's hands, catch a tube from Pimlico into yeah. Brick Lane. And um, this, this place used to be buzzing, buzzing, full of Bengalis. And you know what the worst bit is? I said to myself, I'm never going to ever settle in East London because back in them days, the Murubi Sassan, they used to wear the cycle Genji and the Longi. And they used to spit out the fig from the, the guad that they used to eat. And I used to think, eee, disgusting. We were it's used a Bangladeshi cultural thing where uh, eat, uh, eat chewing betel nut with the pan leaf and uh, it makes your mouth red and spitting it out. So that's why it was quite revolting. Absolutely. And yeah. now we're based here and we yeah. spend a lot of time here. And guess what? We chew the same thing. Yeah. And we're now 40 plus. No, I'm not 40 yet. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, Shalim enjoys pan, I don't. Um, right, let's crack on with this because Shalim's gonna t uh, we're going to talk about today about Brick Lane and we're going to cook some wonderful food. And I'm anticipating and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping Shalim's going to enjoy my cooking. I mean, we're childhood friends. There's going to be a few people who's going to come as well and just show you a bit of Brick Lane. And if, you, if you're going to enjoy these recipes, put it on the comment section and maybe I might come here again, right? Inshallah. Yeah. So if Shalim invites me again, and if you guys want to come down maybe we might hold an event at the restaurant that's the key but the most important thing is I want to show off Bangladeshi food right absolutely and Shalim's giving me the opportunity to cook in his commercial kitchen and he's also giving me a helping hand right I hope so yeah <laughs> inshallah so let's check out Brick Lane and we're also going to be going to a uh, mystery shop right we're going to go to several shops and we're going to just film and ask some questions and Abdul Latif is going to speak to him and yeah. just get a quick update regards yeah. to Brick Lane so if you enjoy these uh, this little episode of Brick Lane today we're concentrating on Grand Bangla yes yep and if you uh, if you put it on the comment section and you want to see a bit more of Grand Bangla the inside because at the end of the day this is behind the scenes so this is of my series the behind the scenes I'm going behind the scenes of Grand Bangla Absolutely. because Shalim's given me the opportunity I'm going to cook some wonderful food for you guys so without further ado let's crack on Brick Lane uh, behind the scenes series looking forward to it <laughs> right people so we go in to Whitechapel because Brick Lane don't have uh, fresh sea bass. sea bass so we're going to Whitechapel we're gonna get some lovely sea bass also I need paya which is the cow paya the cow trotters as well as the beef um, we're gonna come back back to Brick Lane and start cooking at Grand Bang Shopping done, Shell? Oh, yes, but yeah, all done. All done. How much was the shopping, bro? Forty-seven pounds. But he gave me two pounds off. Oh wow! Because he knows me. Oh. <laughs> That's the perks of walking around in East London with familiar faces. Uh, right, I bought my groceries, which I'm going to be cooking at Shalim's restaurant uh, for some of the lovely guests, hopefully. Now, I've come all the way to Whitechapel because Brick Lane didn't have those ingredients. And I've met with a fellow councillor, right? Ex councillor? Ex councillor, yes. Yeah. Uh, Martin Zaman. Yeah. See, this is Martin Zaman, he's an ex councillor of Brick Lane Tower Hamlets area. Tower Hamlets, yes. Yeah? yes. So, Tower Hamlets area. And as you know, this is a little mini series that I'm doing on Brick Lane because uh, it's close to my heart. 
heart and I don't know what's happening. I'm in with the people in the know, so they're gonna tell me a little bit about the history of Brick Lane. And I'm focused, as you know, I'm a professional chef and I'm, I focus on the curry side of it. And I want to know what's happened to the curry houses. And hopefully Motinu Zaman is gonna explain a bit more, yeah? Yeah, so um, look, I mean, I mean, I grew up near Brick Lane on Hamley Street and my father had a flat yeah. uh, on Hamley Street. So uh, I have a very uh, strong connection to that. And one of the things that I've seen over the years is, first of all, there has been a kind of a migration of Bengalis from from that Spinnyfields area yeah. and moving out. Uh, that was that's been one of the things. The other thing I've, I've also noticed is that in terms of restaurants, what we saw is Indian restaurants being specifically on Brick Lane. But now we've seen restaurants appearing on Commercial Street and so on. Yeah. Uh, so people have a wider area to go to. Uh, then the most important thing I think is is recent uh, uh, you know development of market stalls. Yeah. You got stalls in like you know on Brick Lane where yeah. people could go and eat for small amount of money without and, and don't have to go to some of the restaurants. Can I can I ask well, you um, as far as I know, which, which we talked about, me and yeah. Shelley talked about earlier. Uh, you know we're from uh, Victoria, Southwest London. Yeah. We used to come to East of London, do our shopping, mm -hmm. and then we used to go to the little sweet and sweet and uh, spice, yeah, yeah. sweet and spice, that, yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. it was cheap and cheerful and it was affordable. However, now uh, in Brick Lane, it is quite pricey. I mean, there, there are stalls on Commercial Street. If you go there uh, on in the middle of the street, then the okay. market, Petticoat Lane, um, and and people are able to sell oh, food there, food, food, food there. So those people would have come to Brick Lane for lunch or whatever. Now they're having to do that. So we need to look at you know if we want the Bangladeshi restaurants, uh, particularly in Brick Lane, to survive, yeah. then, then there's recently there's an application for a stall on Commercial Street. Okay. Is this Sibas? Yeah, Sibas. Right people, so I'm in heart of Brick Lane at Bangla, uh, Bangla Town in Grand Bangla Restaurant. And like I said, Shalim, uh, my childhood friend, has let me come into his premises and I'm going to be cooking uh, in, in the kitchen some fantastic Bangladeshi dishes for these guys to try. Let me show you around. So you've got these pictures of Bangladesh, etc. So to create a nice ambiance, uh, these wooden style tables. Uh, most of the people, there's no cutleries on the table because traditionally eaten by hand. So come check this out, some nice little pictures for sort of uh, nostalgia. You've got those fishes and people in the longi, the sarong thing, shirts. Come check this out. And let me talk about the food. Right, so this is the presentation of the food. So it's an open plan kitchen, so they're cooking in front of us. If you can just show you the kitchen quickly. So this is the Bangladeshi fishes. You've got all these, um, sorry, Bangladeshi food. You've got the borta, which is the mashed potato uh, one over here. You've got the, some fish ones, vegetarian ones, um, some vegetable dishes. Come show this, Shalom. Show some of the food. So that's the potato. You got the black chickpea, you got these traditional fishes, you've even got those tiny small fishes, um, some bhajis. This is Bangladeshi roe mass, right? Yeah. This is big fabia mass, which is very popular in Bangladesh. You got the Bangladeshi boal mass, this is a fantastic dish. Uh, by the way, how much do you charge for this? It depends. Um, on the big, size? Yeah, the sizes. So it depends on the size of the uh, fish. This is one of my personal favorites, and this is like cooked with uri uh, so it's very nice. Dimbuna, which is the uh, egg buna, and some more fish dishes, and lovely beef and chicken. So today I'm going to be doing a beef curry for you, and I'm going to show you these chunky pieces. Let me show you some chunky monkey pieces. Yeah, you ready for this moment? Ready. Yeah. Let me show so people. Check this meat out. Lovely chunky pieces. This is very famous Bangladeshi sinna. So it's the brisket of the beef. Now this is as big as my palm. Shell, what do you think, man? Juicy. Juicy, yeah. This is proper juicy, the fat, everything. We're going to cook this for a few hours. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Now the sister's going to wash this for us and I'm going to start preparing the dish. Right, people. So I'm going to cook a lovely beef Nihari. This is very traditional Bangladeshi dish. However, I'm going to put my personal touch to it and hopefully my friends are going to enjoy it. The secret ingredient to this is going to be that's the cow trotter. This 
gives a lovely gelatinous, fatty, silky, smooth flavor. And this is gonna be sort of velvety in your mouth. It's gonna be beautiful. So we're gonna wash everything and then start cooking the cooking process. Salaam alaikum. Are you okay with some um, tomatoes? Right, I'm getting my ingredients ready. So far, I've got some garlic paste, ginger paste. Right, the beef is going in. Garlic's going in. Ginger's going in. Okay. Loads of green chilies. Chopped tomatoes going in, or tomato wedges. Some oils just going in. Some onions going in. Right, the blend of spices going in, turmeric, chili powder, uh, coriander powder, cumin powder, and some uh, curry powder. I'm not using garam masala because the curry powder is gonna have garam masala. Beautiful. For the lovely fragrance and pungent spices, we're gonna be using some garam masala. So we're using cloves, uh, we're using cardamom pods, we're using the cassia bark, which is the cinnamon, the Indian cinnamon, and we're using bay leaf, which is the Bangladeshi tesfata. Big old tesfata, very fragrant, very sweet, and absolutely delicious. That goes in, and we're gonna give everything a mix, put some water and stuff. So all the spice has gone in, the water's going in now, bismillah. We're gonna put this on a nice boil for slow cook it for a good two to three hours. So nice and simple, everything there, put it on a boil and it should be ready. I've just forgotten to put the salt in, so I'm gonna put the salt in last. Guys, this is gonna be amazing. Look at, look how chunky that is. That's the size of my fist, that's the size of the meat. Shell, you hungry, mate? I'm starving, but yeah. I'm all this. this. Look at the color already. Could you imagine once it's cooked, bro? It's gonna be good, yeah? Inshallah. Afar to us, Lobondi, boy, please. Oh, check this out. This flame is very, very powerful. This even might be cooked quicker. Kita go afar besh. Zoldi randa dai bonani ka. Power to us, nani? Right, I forgot to put the salt. So there's about how many kgs? Three and a half kgs, nani? Plus the truck, so it must be four kg. So there's about four kg of meat, so I'm gonna need about four tablespoons. So one, two, three, four. Put in a little bit less, don't put too much. You can always add. There you go. Now we've got our beautiful assistant. Uh, she's gonna give this a nice mix. Right, now this normally takes about three hours. However, because of the size of the burner, it is massive. So I'm praying it's gonna be done in two hours. So what's the time, Shell? 5.30, so put the alarm on for 7.30, yeah? Bismillah tawakkulallah. So in a couple of hours, this should be ready. Although we're gonna keep an eye on it, we may need to add a bit of water. Yeah, 
for the fish uh, the fish has been cooked right over here as I'll show you there you go we're gonna add the fish at the last minute look at the beef cooking away Crunches. Oh, look, look at that! Look at that! This beef is amazing. Well, let me show you this meaty piece. Oh wow! Slow cook it until it's nice and soft. When it's soft, it's ready. Wonderful. Probably need another two hours. <laughs> uh, this is going to be like a kima, 
Kima got kebab, similar to a chapli kebab, if people are familiar with chapli kebab. So that's that going in. Now I'm going to need to put some fresh ingredients in there. So I need some onions, ginger garlic, etc. Got some over here actually. Garlic paste. Ginger paste. Here's my masala. Uh, it's quite difficult working in someone else's kitchen. But if the food tastes good, then I'll be happy. Show close up of the fish, bro. What's up guys? Fish is having a nice little bath. Check this out. Lovely sea bass. It's been marinated, fried before, and now it's just cooking in, the, in that amazing sauce. There you go. Let's give it a mix. There you go. It's on a very slow gas. So this is the slow cooked beef. Look at that. That oil is rising to the top. It's nearly ready. Are you ready for a big piece? <laughs> come close, come close. Absolutely yeah. delicious. Delicious, yeah? But this is Sina. I know you enjoy Sina. However, it's got something that you think you don't enjoy. Can you guess what this is? This is Falcha, which is a paya, cow feet. Okay. So this is going to release the fat, the gelatinous. It's going to bring out so much flavor in the beef. So this is a proper, this is my side of cooking, yeah? Yeah, so today, so all the guests, oh, check this sauce out, bro. Look how thick, this is thick from the fat. That fat, that rendering out. Look at that sinner. Look at that. Look at that beef. Whoopsie. Come here, come here, come here. Yo, check that out. This is delightful. So now, all he's doing is cooking in a slow cooker, in a slow gas. Oh, check this shatora, yeah? Shatora, beautiful. So now, on a simmer, cooking away. Now this is the sauce for the chicken. Very different, very unusual. Chicken's been fried already. Yeah. Chicken yeah, it's been mas uh, it's been uh, uh, what's we call it fried with a bit of masala. Uh, now I put the gas up here. Uh, this is like a chicken jal fry fry karahi stuff. So, yeah, this is traditional British Bangladeshi. Yeah. So let that cook away. Sileti, that's it. Allah. <laughs> How's that fish look? Oh wow, I mean, I'm yeah. the biggest fan of fish. Yeah, oh. that does look really nice. So one piece each of these, the beef, chicken, you're in for a little treat. Right people, so we've got a special guest, guest of honor, a childhood friend, grew up together. He's gonna be our taster today. So he's gonna come and taste a little bit of the salt and the spices, etc., before it goes out to everybody, all the guests. So introduce yourself, bro. Uh, my name's Akbar. I've known uh, Latif for many, many years since we've been kids. Growing and, up together. Um, yeah, I can't wait to try the food. I know it's gonna be good, so I've got my yeah. spoon ready. So he really enjoys the beef, and there's a part of beef that you enjoy, which is the sina, yeah? Yeah, I think it's like rib area brisket, kind brisket. of meat. Brisket. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah I absolutely yeah. love it. He enjoys the brisket, he enjoys that fat and so on. But he told me that uh, he doesn't like the trotter, the paya. Yeah, yeah? The, uh, the, the jelly. Yeah, the, the jelly, jelly the, the jelly like. Uh, Gel gelatinous ge meat. Gelatinous. No, not so me. when I thought of this dish, I thought of you. Okay. Well, so, so hold on. So you said he said he loves the sina meat, right? Yes. And he hates the trotters. Yeah. Guess what I've done? I'm cooking the sina with the trotters. Yeah. So something he loves and something he hates. 
and he's gonna have to try it and check it out. Come taste it, wow. bro. Come with me. Yo, Shell, check this shami kebabs out. This is Bengali style. Me cross between chakli kebab, shami kebab, and kima bora. Now this is for my good friend Akbar. Yo, check this out, bro. Check this oh, out. The meat yeah, is breaking ooh, away, yeah. Ooh, ooh, I like that. I like that. So, oh yeah. So now you can be a bit of Mark Wiens today, yeah. For me, this is the trotter. This is the the trotters that you're talking about. See that? See that? See that fat? That gelatinousness? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, but look at that sauce. Look at that sauce. Oh, that sauce yeah. Absolutely. Now let me just give it a little mix. Or oh, check this piece out, bro. Oh. Whoever has that piece is gonna be. In heaven. Go and taste that sauce. Yeah. Be careful, it's hot. Mr. Guess I don't think I'm going to eat this. Go ahead, Jamie. Oh, yeah. What are you saying? Oh, that's really good. Yeah? Go on. Trent came all the way to London, Brick Lane, for this fantastic Grand Bangla place. Uh, they've let me cook in the kitchen, so I've got some authentic Bangladeshi dishes. But this here is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, um, falling off the bone lamb, it's been cooked for about three hours, and then you got all these lovely vegetables. So eats east meets west, fantastic dish. And this is a very famous chef, Bangladeshi no, chef, Atikur Rahman. No, no, why, no, yeah. why, no. How are you, boys? Are you okay? Alhamdulillah, man. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So celebrity Bangladeshi chef, uh, someone to be proud of in the Bangladeshi community, and he's doing a fantastic job in Brick Lane. I want to promote Brick Lane, and Brick Lane needs all you guys to come and try this amazing food. These guys are doing a fantastic job. I mean, lamb leg, modern food with traditional, authentic Bangladeshi food. I'm going to show you a bit later some of the traditional food, and they've got these dishes over here as well. So I think, I think you're doing a fantastic job. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. Thank you, Baya. Thank you. Nice yeah? to see you. Dog. Well, so how's the food? I feel okay. Yeah. Yeah. Something a bit different today. Oh, I'm I'm really 
Twinkle Toes. 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 Twinkle yeah, got me. Right, people, the guests are really enjoying the meal at Grand Bangla. Um, this is a combination which is not uh, usually cooked. This is quite unique because I've used the cow's trotters, which is quite gelatinous, fatty, and it creates a lovely thick sauce. So when you cook a Nihari, most of the time people put a little bit of flour to thicken up the sauce. This is natural juices, natural fat off the beef that rendered out to this lovely thick sauce. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy everyone's enjoying it. So the cow trotters with the Bangladeshi traditional shakora, Siletis love shakora. We've got people here from Mullah Bazaar, Silet, Bishnat. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And someone from Morocco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. South Africa. Yeah. South Africa. Yeah. Uh, North Africa. Uh, North Africa. Yeah. And the food is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Beautiful. Sure. Yeah, really nice. Lovely yeah. food, yeah. So I'm very happy that uh, Grand Bangla uh, in Brick Lane has have accommodated us. And hopefully these guys are going to make some fantastic food. If you pop down to uh, Grand Bangla, traditional Bangladeshi authentic food, and hopefully you will enjoy it like we are. So, Shao, do you want to go and ask everybody? If everything's okay. Some invite. Absolutely amazing. Beautiful food. Thank you very much. Grand Bangla and Latif Bike. Introduce yourself. Don't worry. It's done. Move on. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you
Final khani ko lagi. Afna rasu design bodo booking korta lo. Dikbai rano atur khani kai ta. Please get in touch with Latif or any one of us, and inshallah we'll provide the food for you. Yeah, so Latif, the food was amazing. amazing. Well, I'm, I'm really happy and I'm pleased, but I don't like being praised in front of people. <laughs> However, this as business is business at the end of the day, and I told my good friend, my childhood friend Shalim, um, I would love to be a part of something in Brick Lane. And if you like this vlog, don't forget to like, share, and if you enjoy what I do, make sure you subscribe. But most importantly, put it on the comments section if you would if you will like to uh, possibly come to Brick Lane and uh, there's a few on the comment section if I see if it's viable I would love to invite you so there's about 40 people that you can sit here right yes 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 so there's 40 people that they can uh, accommodate here however there are many other businesses so we can most definitely have a fantastic evening if you wish so hopefully we might do another video and then I might uh, obviously invite you guys with their accommodating us so thank you very much see you soon for the next one Thank you! Thank you.